Hello and welcome to my review of Rebel 7 Pro. My name is Daniel Ibanez and thank you for visiting my channel. I love painting. I'm a traditional artist by training. I've oil painted since I was a teenager and uh, so this all matters to me very, very much. Rebel is a digital painting software that works like traditional paint. It's a traditional painting simulator and this review matters a lot to me because this is something that matters a lot to me. So I took my time with it and I did many, many, many hours of painting, which is good for me, but um, I hope for I hope it's also good for you in that we can um, kind of explore the virtues of this application together. And uh, you get to see my progression as I go from uh, learning about it, experimenting, creating brushes, feeling my way through it to getting good at it and feeling accomplished and feeling excited. And so that whole progression, I think, will make this review very organic and very authentic. And I hope you'll go on this journey with me. Thanks. All right, so let's get to the review. Uh, this review is of Rebel 7 Pro. And you can see the paintings in the background are chronological. This is the first painting I did in the software. And by the end of the review, you'll see my most recent painting in the software. Um, I think that we need to talk firstly about the user interface and kind of the user experience. Uh, from the interface perspective, we have, um, I love in the top corner on the left side, you have the icons that look like real brushes and real pencils and, you know, real graphite, um, that kind of thing. And you can click on those as a, you know, a new user. You could just open up the software and know immediately, hey, I want to oil paint. I'm going to click on the paintbrush. Hey, I want to, um, I want to draw, so I'm going to click on a pencil or a pen or whatever. And so you get the idea. It's very easy to see. It's very um, intuitive. The other thing I love about the user interface is the sliders. So right beneath that, you've got a menu where you can, depending on what brush or what tool or what medium you're using, you can change the size and the you know the attributes of the tool, um, and whether it's the oiliness of the oil paint or the opacity of the watercolor or, you know, the pressure or so on. So that's the kind of thing that you can do just with sliders. That's such a nice way to be able to work. Having that built into that sidebar on the left is incredibly important and really easy to get on with. Um, then you have brush heads, which are just basically the stamp shapes of the brush, and you can click on those individ individual brush heads, and that makes a lot of sense too. Creating brushes is very easy, although there is a sort of like uh, I don't know, I'd say it's still like more in the advanced category to do the uh, brush creation. Um, and But it, it, it really is worth learning. And I'm gonna do my own little tutorial kind of process for that to kind of talk about what I like to do when I'm making brushes. And um, for those of you guys that are interested, you can take my Domestica class, which um, I have brushes uh, on that forum for my class. For Rebel, I have on my brushes for Photoshop and everything else on there too. But I love making brushes. But um, even though I've got some experience with that in Photoshop and with Rebel and with ArtRage and with, you know, anything else, I still found that, you know, isn't just the kind of thing that I can just pick up and know everything about. It is the kind of thing that um, I can really sink my teeth into. There's a lot of depth there. And that's going to be kind of a cool thing because as a more advanced user, you want to have that higher ceiling where you can really, really kind of dig in and, find you know some real nuance and depth so i love that uh, but for the new user i do like the sliders i like the simple icons for the brush heads um, it's it's just really good so i think on the user interface side it's all good it, everything that you need to know is there it makes sense there's a lot of depth to this software though um, and by the way you can see in the background i'm on to you know like a more sophisticated looking portrait and uh, this was a lot easier for me once i started to figure out what brushes i liked and it all just started to you know, make more sense. So um, now I'm on to a landscape and you'll get to see this one develop a little bit more fully. So that should be fun as we kind of talk about things. One of the things we need to talk about is canvas. You can see um, in this image and in all the others, there's a canvas texture. So that all the brush heads and brush kind of textures and, and shapes and performance of the brush based on the sliders, all of that's gonna interface with the canvas texture that you that you select. So there's numerous canvases available for the default software and then you can go onto the website for Escape Motions and you can buy more and, and there's so many on their website. It's just super cool that there's this, this huge range. Um, but the canvases, they're kind of normal maps. So they have like a simulated um, 
texture to them. Um, let, you know, there's like an elevation to the highs and lows, the bumps of the of the canvas or the ripples in the paper, and so on. And those simulated bumps and ripples, they all inter interact really naturally and pretty perfectly uh, with the paint based on the settings and the amount of paint and the liquidity of the paint, the fluidity of the paint, the viscousness of the paint um, in, in ways that are very, very realistic and satisfying. And so that's been always true of the watercolors, which perform just like watercolors, but oh so true also for the oil paints and acrylics and gouache and everything under the sun that's into in this software so you know as you can see in the background this is just coming along great and i was having so much, so much fun with it and it just was a really satisfying experience and here's where i started to really enjoy myself with the software um and you know it didn't take very long i got to a point where i could really dig in these are using this painting was done using a lot of my own brushes and it, it was just a really big blast um that said, um, I think the user interface, we need to talk also about NanoPixel. So let's say you're, you're painting on your laptop. You don't have like a real powerful laptop. You can paint really slow or low resolution, kind of small canvas size, and then you can export with NanoPixel. NanoPixel is a uh, feature from the previous version, uh, the 6.0 release, and it is really useful because it lets you upscale using AI without losing image quality. So you can paint small, export big, and that way you can paint on kind of any software or, or I mean any hardware and, and kind of get a good output. Um, and in addition to that, we have this time around um, the ability to do like metallics um, and it's kind of like real live ray tracing. So that you're, you're able to see the reflective metallic like gold leaf basically or silver leaf or bronze leaf, copper leaf, any of that reflective kind of metal paint. Um, and it looks like the real thing there's many brushes that work with it really well all you have to do is enable it in the layers so there's like a little diamond looking little icon in the layers palette and you can click on a layer and you can enable that that feature in the layer and then you you know go go have fun and and uh, my wife who does a lot of gold leafing in her illustrations um was super interested when I told her about it. So we brought one of her illustrations in and we just gold leafed it, you know, virtually. With NanoPixel enabled, you could see the live ray tracing um, as you kind of move your canvas around, the light would change and refract in different ways. It was really, really cool. So, um, you know, good applications for traditional artists, but also really cool applications for digital artists that want to have that gold leafing look. I have a series of paintings that I'm inspired to try based on what I see is possible um, so you know get inspired by your Gustav Klimt or you know whoever else and and try something fun so um, that's a really cool feature another cool feature is uh, is paths so if you can export like um, you know you can export line work or paths from a, a tool like Adobe Illustrator um, you're able to import those and then utilize those within the complex kind of natural media software that you have here to do some really cool things um, with paths so there's tutorials, videos, and all this stuff on, on the web, but I just wanted to tell you, in my opinion, they all work really well, and they are useful. They expand the functionality of the tool in a way that, that is meaningful and allows you to have greater flexibility and versatility. Uh, speaking of versatility, um, charcoal. I love charcoal. I, I'm a painter, so I like to draw with charcoal more than I like to draw with pencils. I like big, uh, chunky, blocky, um, shape and value finding tools as opposed to working with smaller tools like pencils and stuff. So I found that the versatility here is really important. You know, in the you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine little brushes uh, and ten brushes that are set and kind of in the default set of the charcoal. And you can like uh, scrape or spray or drizzle uh, charcoal flakes or dust across your canvas, and you can use all different sorts of charcoal strokes to make something that looks so good and so realistic and I've I've really not found anything comparable in the way that it can handle simulated charcoal so I, I find that to be a really fun medium but as fun as it is I'd I still would rather paint uh, because that's my primary preference but I found that that was a really really great way to work and then looking back you know looking back in time at, at my history of learning about Rebel, the first time I ever saw it was in an Imagine FX magazine where I saw like a tutorial for a watercolor and I said, wow, that looks incredibly realistic. And then it was much later that I actually picked up a, a demo of it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. But it was kind of a, I don't know, it was kind of like a, a parlor trick or something, you know, like I, I thought, wow, this is really fun, but I didn't, 
I didn't really use it because I, I don't like, you know, watercolor very much. I was like, oh, it's fun, but, and I love it. It was kind of like something I love to show my friends, but I didn't find myself painting with it all that much. Um, but I, I do paint more with watercolor features now, um, although I don't do it nearly as much again as I do with more of the oil brush settings and, and the oil brush tools and the oil brush kind of kit. So, um, but for the point, uh, the purpose and point of doing a review, I wanted to make sure that I tinkered around with it. And I think the brushes work better than ever. And, the, you know, it's just as fluid as ever and performance is good. And you can see, you know, even as I've got this kind of time lapse going, you can see that the paint goes on and then it spreads and pools and dries and all kinds of stuff, which is really great. So you can um, also tilt the table, you know, the virtual table of your digital canvas so that the the water will drip and and pool and drain toward whatever gravity, uh, a direction of gravity is based on the tilt of your, your canvas. And you can see that tilt there um, is up in the top right. It's uh, kind of a, in a tab right below like the color. So that all works really well. And by the way, um, I was just color sampling this watercolor painting from a previous uh, uh, acrylic painting I did at the Duomo in Florence and I thought it would just be fun to kind of repaint it um, in watercolor and, and it really was it looks it looks just kind of like I hoped it would and um, I found it was just a just a blast so um, watercolor is great uh, acrylics are great gouache is great uh, oil painting is great um, charcoal of course is great um, all the different papers are awesome and you, you know there's a bunch of different things with like color profiles and you can paint in such a way that it's like painting with simulated actual pigments instead of uh you know instead of uh using like the color picker or or like you know all kinds of stuff so anyway um it has natural real color mixing like natural color mixing where you put green and blue or uh blue and yellow together it makes green like you saw there um then i also wanted to, to test out the chalk pastels oil pastels and Again, they were great. It's not, again, my favorite way of working, but uh, for friends of mine that do, you know, professional work in pastels, like it, it works great. It, you know, you can get that very professional look. So that's super fun. Uh, but I can't keep myself away from the painting. So, you know, I always end up going back to the painting tools. I just think that the mixing and the simulation of the, the kind of liquid media is just more fun than the dry media. So, um, and I especially love oil paint kind of stuff. So I, I always go back to that. And you can see here in this illustration, I just, it was just tinkering around. I was like just playing with all kinds of different stuff. And I was at this point finding a lot of comfort. So um, I like found the brushes I liked and was able to kind of get the line work that I like and get the looseness that I like and the angularity that I like. And I'm just starting to feel really comfortable with the whole tool set and was able to kind of make the colors that I wanted and um, kind of find my rhythm. Um, I keep tweaking the, the tools, you know, I keep tweaking the oil brushes and the brush sets and the textures and the grain and all the different little things, you know, the more I paint, the more I tweak and tinker and um, the more fun I have because the more the, the paint looks like I want it to look. So um, I just kind of was testing out a bunch of stuff. So um, I wanted also to go back one more time before I kind of finished my review and Play with landscape again and um i'd had this image in my reservoir um that i just thought would be fun to, to i don't know just fun to play with and um you know uh, yeah so I, I just wanted to kind of take a look at some different brushes and some different settings and you know kind of think about how how i set everything up before i did this one and it was it was good i i feel like it reminded me a lot of some of my plein air painting days and just getting out um, and painting in the woods. And I really loved being able to do that um, uh, back in the day. And I'm planning to do a bunch this year. So this painting was really kind of inspired by that. And I wanted the painting to have a feeling of a plein air painting. So I know when I'm out there sketching in plein air, I want to go fast and furious because I don't, you know, you have to contend with the wind and the changing of the light mostly. And you have to change, you know, the, the weather and just different things. So uh, the key is to paint fast and to, and, and to paint boldly and, you know, work work your values really, you know, confidently and know exactly what your plan is. And so I kind of tackled this in that way very directly. And um, I found that it was a, it was a lot of fun. Like it, it really worked to do that. And I was able to 
go from my darkest darks to my lightest lights and you know find brushes that were analogs for the way I like to to work on things I found like the paint uh, I was able to put it down as like uh, as you can see right here uh, the icon I've selected right under the sliders over on the left hand side it I was able to just kind of paint as if um, as if it wasn't really painting for mixing it was just painting for painting and then you know as you get further on in that's when I, I, I turn the mix mode on so that the paint can be a little more uh, interactive with the paint that's on the canvas but even in this just pure painting mode it, it still interacts really well you get a lot of the good blending you still get a lot of bristly texture it's just a really nice really nice uh, app it just uh, you can get so much so much done with it and you can paint almost anything so um, or I guess you could you can paint anything I mean it's just it's just amazing um, I like this painting a lot and I let, let it play a little bit more in the video than maybe some of the others because I just felt like it it was a nice process. You could kind of see the thinking, you could see the progression of the values, you could see, um, you know, kind of me finding my way. And I really loved more than anything, just seeing some of the really bristly uh, texture. You know, if you have a few of those old brushes in your kit, if you're out oil painting and you know, they're, they're a little stiffer than they should be, but they used to be really nice brushes with nice long bristles. And um, that's kind of what I was going for. It's kind of that like, a little bit mangy mangled brush kit and um, I wanted it to to look really fresh and you can see up close here I just wanted that chunky fast action kind of painting now you can see here I'm I'm uh, going in a little closer to do some blending so you can see how you can knock down your your edges a little bit and soften those up and how easy it is to kind of work in to those areas and, and smooth and blend and you know and all that so Again, that's that benefit. Like if you're painting this in Photoshop, you wouldn't be able to do that. But in Rebel, you get the benefit of the texture and, and the blending and all that stuff just acting like real, real paint. So more fun than I could say. And then on this one, I was looking up like uh, facial expressions and I found this picture I thought would be kind of hard to paint because uh, the skin tones were kind of like, like I don't know, kind of like between pumpkin and rotting pumpkin. And then the, the facial expression was really really good because it created a, a really weird set of of crunched up values around the shadow side of the nose and I just thought if I can paint this comfortably then you know I'm in business with this software and I, I think I'm in good shape so I found it to be really easy by this point I was just very comfortable with the software and um, had no problem just kind of blocking this in, knew what brushes I wanted to use, knew kind of what te techniques I wanted to use, and knew kind of how I wanted everything to work. And everything was just smooth and simple, and um, it was it was just fun, you know? And I think between the, the lighthouse image and this kind of like funny expression portrait, I thought it was gonna be, you know, I thought I was ready. I thought I was ready for, you know, sharing this out to the world and saying, hey, you know, I've got something that that I can say now about this software, I can confidently say I like it, I can confidently get the outcomes I want no matter what I'm painting, I can confidently start sharing my brushes and my brush sets and my techniques and, and my concepts and workflow. Um, and when I get to that point, then I know, you know, I'm confident about kind of putting my stamp of approval on a piece of software. So um, I've been pretty busy with stuff uh, over the last few months and haven't really had a lot of time to post, but I, you know chipped away at it and finally got to the point where i knew i was ready so uh here i am you know here uh here's rebel 7 and you know there's been tons of reviews on on youtube and stuff already and i'm sure you've seen them but um here's mine and for whatever it's worth i just thought mostly it'd be helpful to see some of the paint process and you know you can pause the video at any point and say oh what brush is he using oh what you know what are the settings oh what's this what's that and you know you can kind of dissect things as you'd like but to make it a little easier on you i'm sure i'm going to go ahead and share out some of those um things a little more step by step in the future uh so you know look for that and look for stuff on other apps and other things to come i'm just really grateful though to to um get into this app because it's an absolute must have. It's one of the best pieces of painting software has ever been made in the human history. This is unbelievable. And the fact that you can do anything and everything in it is a testament to the talent and the team and the, the uh, amazing um, the amazing quality they have. They are fantastic developers and they've made an incredible product and all the best to those guys. They are, they are doing great. This is a winner and uh, look for more. Thanks so much.